The Airbus 220 is one of the most advanced aircraft in aviation. It's designed for long-range, fuel-saving, and quieter flying experience. But what actually makes this aircraft so special? Well, at the heart of this aircraft, we have the Pratt & Whitney 1500G engine, one of the most innovative engines in modern aviation. But how does this work and what makes this engine more efficient? Well, as an aircraft maintenance engineer, I'm going to be breaking down some key components of the Pratt & Whitney 1500G and explaining their function in this video. Before we learn about the key components of this engine, let's learn some characteristics of this aircraft. Well, the Airbus 220 comes in two versions. We have the Airbus 220-100 and we have the Airbus 220-300. The most significant difference between these two versions is the length. The Airbus 220-100 is about 35.8 meters or 117 feet in length and the Airbus 220-300 is about 38.7 meters or 127 feet in length. When it comes to performance, the A220 is no slouch. It has a maximum cruising speed of Mach 0.28 which is about 871 kilometers per hour and can range up to 6,390 kilometers. It can also fly up to an altitude of 41,000 feet which is really good for fuel efficiency and smoother flight. When it comes to fuel efficiency, one of the key factors to consider is the design. Over 50% of the Airbus 220 structure is made of composite material which helps to reduce weight and also fuel efficiency. Now that we know some characteristics of the A220, let's dive into the Pratt & Whitney 1500G engine and learn some components and also their function. In this video, I'm going to be starting from the front of the engine all the way to the back. So I'm going to be explaining some key components for this Pratt & Whitney engine, starting from the front of the engine all the way to the back. Starting from the front of the engine, the first component I'm going to be talking about is the spinner. And the whole purpose of this spinner is for aerodynamic smoothness. So it helps to guide incoming air into the fan blade, reducing turbulences and improving efficiency. And on the spinner, you have a white mark. And the whole purpose of this white mark is for rotation indication. So whenever the engine is spinning on the ground, it serves as a visual indication confirming the engine is spinning and also serve as a safety precaution, indicating and telling people that the engine is actually live. The next component I'm going to be talking about is the fan blade. And the whole purpose of the fan blade is to generate trust. For this Airbus 220, we have about 22 fan blade. And for the material used on the fan blade, the leading edge of the fan blade is made of titanium. And the whole purpose is for strength and durability. And for the body of the fan blade is made of composite material. And the whole purpose of the composite material is for lightweight and efficiency. Next component I'm going to be talking about is the acoustic panel and the whole purpose of the acoustic panel is for noise reduction so it helps to reduce the sound level produced by the engine particularly from the turbine and the fan blade it also serves as a vibration damper. At the top of the fan electrical we have the T12 probe which is also known as a TAT sensor. And the whole purpose of the T12 probe is to measure the total air temperature um, entering the fan inlet cow, and also it provides the data to the EEC, which helps the engine to adjust for the uh, fuel and air mixture. All right, guys, now that we've learned a little bit about the front of the engine, let's open it up and take a look inside to see what's going on behind the fan cow. Um, there are some key components behind this fan cow that plays a crucial role in making the engine more efficient. So let's take a look. Now we're about to open the fan cow. Opening up the fan cow is actually a pretty easy task, but still requires some attention. 
and that is because there's actually a sequence to open the fan cow and also for closing so in order to open the fan cow um, you have to go from the back to the front which is l3 l2 l1 and to close you go from the front to the back which is l1 l2 l3 um, in order to open the latch it's a pretty easy one um, first thing you gotta do is to unlock the latch by pressing the push button um, that actually brings the latch downwards um, and from there you can just pull like about 10 pounds to yank the latch open it's a really easy one you can literally do it with your finger uh, and to, in order to close the latch is the opposite of opening um, but you got to pay attention to making sure the latch actually engages um, because I've seen some situation whereby people don't engage the latch properly um first thing you want to make sure it's engaged properly first and that way you can just um push the latch but yeah opening and closing of the latch is a pretty easy tax another cool feature of this latch is you can actually adjust the tension of the latch and in order to do that is you just turn that knob either clockwise to increase the tension and counterclockwise to reduce the tension uh, and the whole purpose of that is actually to make sure the latch, the fan cow is seated properly. Um, and the AMM gives you a specific um, tension for each latch um, for the fan cow opening. Now that we've learned a little bit about opening of the fan cow, let's move to opening of the trust reversal, which is my TR call. Um, opening of the trust reversal is pretty easy. Uh, and the reason why is the latches are literally the same design as the fan cow, uh, which is the same process of opening it. Uh, but the difference is the fan cow has three latches and the trust reversal has six of them. Um, three of the stress reversal are visible so basically you can just go under the engine you can see those latches really easy um, but the rest of the three you cannot see them visibly so you have to remove this access panel first then after you can see the rest of the three latches um, opening of these two latches is the same way of opening the fan cow so basically you unlock the latch first by pressing the push button um, pull a little bit of tension to yank it out, uh, which is about what 10 pounds to pull on this in order to open the, um, the latch. Um, and you do the same for the second one. Um, me personally, I like starting off with these internal latches first because it has less attention and it's way more easier to open rather than opening the outside latches first, then opening this um, last. The last one is a little bit different and this requires you to push turn counterclockwise to unlatch and pull downwards um this handle actually serves another purpose so it serves as a visual um, indication that the latches are not closed so let's say for example um if you close all the latches but you forget to close the internal latches or the panel this handle is actually going to be sticking outside so that way you can visually see that the panel and the latches inside are not closed properly so yeah that's pretty much it um, all right we've got the tr and the fan cow open now i'm gonna go through some major components of this pw 1500g engine uh, i'm not gonna go through all the components here i'm just gonna go through some of the major components here and i'll probably make a part two of this video explaining the other component that i miss in this video first component i'm going to be talking about is the fuel pump for the location of the fuel pump for the pw 1500g engine um the fuel pump is located at the left side of the engine facing forward and it's mounted on the accessory gear box um the whole purpose of the fuel pump is the fuel pump is responsible for delivering fuel at the correct pressure and flow rates to the engine so basically the fuel pump provides continuous and regulated flow of fuel to the fmu my fmu is the fuel military units then the fmu precisely controls how much fuel is sent to the combustion chamber um, based on the engine's demand um for this engine um the, we have the dual stage fuel pump so basically we have the low pressure pump and we have the high pressure pump for the low pressure stage of uh, the low pressure stage ensures a steady fuel supply from the tank while the high pressure stage increases the pressure needed for efficient combustion.
Next component I'm going to talk about is the hair and oil separator. And the whole purpose of the hair and oil separator is to ensure pure oil circulates back into the engine by separating the hair from the oil. And this is because when oil circulates through the engine, it picks up some hair bubbles due to high speed rotation and ventilation. So the hair and oil separator removes the hair from the returning oil before it goes back to the tank to ensure the engine gets a uh, pure oil lubrication next component i'm going to be talking about is called the starter and the whole purpose of the starter is it's responsible for initiating the engine's first rotation during startup um essentially it provides the initial power needed to get the engine turning before the fuel and ignition system takes over um for this engine specifically the type of starter we have is called the air turbine starter uh, which means it's powered by compressed air from the aircraft pneumatic system um, and how does the starter works? So the starter gets its hair from the aircraft pneumatic system. Once activated, the compressed hair turns the turbine inside the starter, which engages the gearbox and the gearbox rotates the engine. And once it gets to a certain speed, then the fuel system and ignition system takes over. The next component I'm going to be talking about is called the thrust link and what's the whole purpose so basically it controls the direction of the amount of thrust produced by the engine so it's a mechanical linkage that connects the engine thrust producing parts such as the fan blade or the turbine blade to the engine control system and it ensures the engine thrust is properly adjusted and controlled by the aircraft um, throttle system the next component you're looking at is called the VFG, which is the Variable Frequency Generator. And what's the whole purpose of the VFG? Um, the VFG is responsible for supplying electrical power to the aircraft system. Unlike your traditional generator like the IDG, um, the VFG produces electrical power at variable frequency and it depends on the engine speed and also the operating condition. So how does the VFG work? Um, basically, the VFG converts mechanical energy from the rotating engine coil into electrical energy. Um, and it adjusts its frequency based on the engine speed and also the load requirement. Alright guys, so that's it for this video. Um, if you guys like this type of videos, let me know down in the comments.